Good evening everyone. Today we have new live session and as you can see we continue work uh, to work on this vehicle, quite special one from ICM. Uh, those are basically the finishing steps so as you can see we have almost all parts in their uh, respective places. We even have the spare wheel in the rear area. We just have to fix the special part and we will be done. Next will be to apply the chrome paint here and what else? Window frame will be, uh, the windscreen frame will be on the last steps. A roof might be painted today. We can also paint the fuel cans and obviously the steering wheel. I forgot somehow to install it beforehand. So it will be a bit tricky to install it now, but I mean, it will be doable. But first, let's just um, fix the spare wheel in place. Just give me a second to tune the stream so that I can see what you're writing on the stream, on YouTube stream. Unfortunately, uh, I do not see on the same screen the comments on the Facebook. I will be checking them from time to time, so no worries. I will be answering them as well. And of course, you can comment both videos afterwards when they will be stored just simple just as a simple videos not as a live streams and once again i remind you that you can support us by pressing the donate button on our website it is easy and it is safe and of course it will be decided by you how much we deserve to get from you but be sure that all this money will be used for new photo and video equipment which is really needed for us I would like to have uh, even more interesting streams. So once we have enough money for this, we will be doing it even more, uh, even in more engaging way, I would say. I was discussing those plans before, so if you follow our streams, you should be aware of this. So now we are going to fix this part in place. I will use this Fast setting glue in order to glue this part. Just give me a second. Okay, so we have spare wheel in place. Now, uh, what is next? We have everything in interior wise in place. So this frame is empty. There are no parts left and goes away. A sprue is also empty and the only parts uh, sprue with parts is the C type because we have rifles here. But that won't be for a long time because we will, um, let's say, separate these parts and place them into the necessary spots. Okay, so steering wheel. Let's go for a steering wheel because I would like to see it in place. And for steering wheel, we would need the black cover. And unfortunately, I don't like how Vallejo paints work when you use them with brush. Yes, yeah, some might say that it is necessary to use them with um, paint retarder or paint thinner, but you know the why I'm not sure why other manufacturers, for example, AK Interactive and Meek, they have paints ready to be used with brush out of the bottle, while this manufacturer Vallejo is not that good for this purpose. Even though I'm using model Air series which should be a relatively more suitable um, series for brushing. But we have such an unfortunate experience with this. Well, this is my opinion, I would say. So I would be happy if you can advise how to tackle such experience and avoid it. 
Okay, so just give me a second. We are going to paint the steering wheel into the black color. Then we will wait to dry for several seconds or minutes and install it straight away into our car. By the way, I think we will be taking break from all live feeds for Christmas and New Year time. So you will be, I mean, there will be live, not live, but daily reviews published every day but there won't be any live review during next week and well i mean following two weeks from now on so basically this build will be final for this year and then we would move on with the next project in 2019 but believe me it should be quite interesting build because I have already some plans on what to assemble and <clears throat> I think it will be quite an interesting project to do. Again it will be another AFV so it's a small hint let's say but of course I will be also happy to know some suggestions or to hear some suggestions from you. Maybe you can advise some other interesting kit which we can use for our next build. So now just give me a second. I would like to find a suitable paint for this, for the roof and also for um, rifles because rifles should be also painted with brush. And for this, I think there was a nice paints accessory set from AK Interactive. So just give me a second. I'm just going to check which colors do we need. Here it is written that we need wood and felt grow. So it's basically green, gray. And now I'm just going to check if I have such set suitable for this purpose. Um, I also found the textured earth and also brown powder, which will be needed for the weathering purposes. But it will be a bit later. And now... We also have wood weathering set, that's not pretty much what I want, so just one moment, rust, old weathering wood, no, 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 so not this one, I've also found the model wash, it might be handy. It's also Vallejo model wash. So I'll just place it here in order not to forget it because it will be needed for um, radiator grill. I'm checking the uh, this interesting set from AK Interactive. So as you can see it's engines and metal weathering set. And we might give a small a uh, turn of weathering to the engine because it will be open the final vehicle but not for now so that's why I'm just going to check another shelf maybe I have something there because I'm <clears throat> quite sure that there was a special set for heavy mud and for accessories and here it is so I will show it in a second. Oh 
Okay, we are going to use for this AK Interactive products. And first of all, I'm just a bit surprised that this um, this box is yellowish, but here you can see the first one. It's dust and dirt deposits. Might be handy. Then we have another one. It's a heavy muddy weathering set. This one might be handy as well because we have damp earth, wet effects fluid, summer Kursk earth. That's what we need. And also dark earth pigment. So it will be interesting to apply all those things on our car. And then we have what we need here is this buff dark shade. I would use a dark shade. As you can see, the tank accessories, but obviously it is handy for cars as well because you can see it on the box art. And we are going to use a buff dark shade for our roof. So just give me a second. I'll open it and we will start using it straight away. A bit of shaking should help mix paint a bit. So steering wheel will be put aside. And actually that's quite surprising that main parts are wooden. And I'm not sure why they're wooden. But it is shown on in assembly manual that they should be painted as a wood. So here you can see this paint. You can remember the paint number in case you would need it as well. As you can see, that's a buff dark shade as it's written here. So we are going to apply it with large brush or maybe even with airbrush because it will be faster and easier. So just give me a second. I would just add four drops of paint because that's more than enough for such part. Then we use, some people use towels. I use toilet paper because it's smaller in size. But obviously it's up to you. Now sorry for extra noise because it will be my compressor working for this for airbrush. So let's go. I'm going to hold it with um, this segment because it will be painted with wooden area. And note that I did not prime the I let a bit of thinner. I did not prime the roof, I did not cover it with primer, so it might be problematic to get paint stay in place, but we will see it in a second. So okay it goes. Now let's do it. So as you can see paint does not adhere perfectly to the roof so that's why I have to go all around the part in order to have to avoid floating paint because otherwise it will look ugly and of course it is really necessary to paint all the lower edges because otherwise you might end up with uh, gray plastic below the parts. <laughs> Hi horse. I'm going to reduce the pressure a bit because it will also help avoid paint flowing somewhere. Uh, in my plans is to install this roof on the vehicle, cover the vehicle with clear lacquer and then we would apply some washes in order to get more realistic appearance because now it would look just a plain buff shade which is not that attractive
maybe I will also paint separately all those belts <coughs> in order to bring some color into this area because belts were different color they were a slightly darker shade so that's why it's worth playing with this as well so we have roof more or less painted as you can see it turns out this yellowish color which is more or less close to what you can see on the real vehicles by the way I found one interesting things about how these cars were painted because of the heavy usage in the field just give me a second I will finish it and we'll talk Okay, it seems to be fine. Now I'm going to clean the airbrush and we would be good to go. Uh, there is no <laughs> brand, uh, I would say, preferred choice for the airbrush. I just picked the cheapest one on the market. I think it's Fengda or something like this. And it's more or less fine, of course, I would like to use, I mean, it would be cool to use expensive airbrush, but I'm not that eager to invest on this at the moment. And as you can see, oh, what you can get from this airbrush is more than enough for such basic purposes. And now we are going just to clean airbrush a bit. As I said, now I'm more inclined to, to make the stream more interesting for you, so I think it will be more interesting with the special equipment. And just to remind you that everybody can support us by pressing the donate button on our website. Okay, so final cleaning steps. As you can see, I'm removing needle every time just to clean the main chamber. But it, be, it is up to you how do you clean the airbrush. It's always better to fully disassemble airbrush, but you will become crazy if you do it every time you paint the model. And obviously that's not that cool when you need to paint a lot of minor elements here and there, constantly changing the shades and <laughs> it will be fun to disassemble and assemble your brush every time. So obviously it has some reasonable, let's say, borders and I usually clean it in the end of the day. I mean, thoroughly clean it. Okay. So, we have roof painted, I'll leave it aside just for a few minutes to dry. I hope the steering wheel should be fine already, so we are going to take it and note this. Actually, here we have quite surprising result. As you can see, it looks really good, even though I used Vallejo black paint. And usually it is really difficult to get it painted right. But here it is really nice result. I'm quite surprised and I can say it openly. It's really cool looking black shade on the steering wheel. Now what we are going to do is to install steering wheel here. And on Facebook you might not see it, but I'm showing it the space between pedals. Let's move car a bit 
forward, so here. And for this I would need the light. So sorry, I will take it away from you. And I will just take the super glue because otherwise it will be really difficult to have parts stay in place. It's quite a long um, angle, quite a long leverage. And that's why it will be overweighting and tilting all the time. So it's better to be safe, to take the super glue and to install it straight away into the place. So I'm going to take a small drop of super glue. I'm going to apply it on the other end of the steering wheel. Dry the toothbrush. And now we go place the steering wheel inside this area. And the true fun starts because I did not apply this part or install this part straight away. And now I have to do this stuff. As you can see, that's not that easy. And just <clears throat> let me to check. Actually, that should be easy because as far as I can see, it should be also attached to the dashboard. So if you if we carefully apply it on the dashboard, I mean here below and glue it to the dashboard as well, it should work fine. So we are going to do the second try. Doing a bit of super glue here and a bit of super glue here. Now we are just going to Install it where it should be, and connect it to the dashboard. Okay, now it's fixed in place. Just let me remove the hair because there was one small dust speckle. And now the steering wheel in place. So as you can see, we have quite an interesting looking car. And what is next? Uh, next, I think, will be installation of the roof. And basically, it will be ready for decals application. I will apply decals without clear uh, lacquer layer because we just don't have time for this and it will be painted straight away with clear liqueur gloss one uh, for weathering purposes and then it will be repainted with matte layer in order to have the final appearance of the week and okay so we have the roof painted as you remember it will be placed in the rear section and it will add approximately a bit of color i'm removing actually closing the tank accessories set and returning it back to my shelf. So just give me a second. I'm also searching for the wood weathering set because there were nice wood shades and this might be handy for rifles painted. So again I need a second for this. Okay, you have it here. So again, this is a set for old and weathered wood, but obviously we would need several shades to paint the rifles. And we would be good to go. And by the way, I'm going to use those two pastes 
for obviously gun metal for the rifles and iron will be handy for headlamps. And okay, so we are going to start with wood and just doing a bit of shaking because all those paints were laying around for quite a long time and now they need a remixing. Okay, so I'm going to use the varnished wood. It looks like this. Here you can see that it's varnished wood. This one, in my opinion, is more or less suitable for the rifle, but obviously um, the final choice is up to you. And I also installed the um, special uh, small parts which uh, replicate the holders for these rifles. So it's basically just a matter of separating the part of the sprue and you're good to go. But what I'm thinking about is that this shape might be a bit too light for this scale, for this size. And maybe I would use a wood grain, which is a bit darker and more suitable for our intentions. I'm going to show it in a second. Okay, so here it is. Again, it's not mixed properly yet. I will remove vehicle just not to have any happy accidents with it. And we would be painting the rifles. Okay, let's go. So we use again the small brush, thin brush, and oops, that's why I removed the car from working area, is it say, from workspace, so that we won't have such problems. So yeah, bottle flying around. And let's try it here. So as you can see, it's dark brown shade. Now you should be able to see it on the Facebook as well. And this dark brown shade should look good after you apply some weathering to it. I'm cleaning it with finger because paint is still not um, dry, that's why it is easier to clean by finger than to repaint the part completely. Here we are painting the whole rifle. Don't be afraid of the strokes, brush strokes, because they will actually help you uh, replicate the wood grain and it will look good in the final appearance when you apply a bit of matte lacquer. So I'm going just to continue painting this section. And also here. Now it looks more or less okay, and we go with the next rifle. Let's moisten brush a bit so that it won't be too stiff.
Um, I thought about using this shade also for roof, but I think it will be too much because as you can see it is quite bright and it is better to use something whiter. I'm not sure why this rifle does not get covered in wooden shade, so we need to investigate it. Maybe we have to shake bottle a bit in order to have paint properly mixed. I hope so, because otherwise it will be quite a surprise to have not working paint. Okay, so now it's more or less fine. I'll just clean my finger. And we start again. Actually, somehow this bottle got dirty. I'm going to clean it a bit. Another interesting tip is to clean the bottle tip before closing it because this way you have the clean and nice bottle which will be easy to use without any speckles of paint which are somehow sometimes tricky to overcome. So I see that rifles don't want to be painted at least this one and this is not a good sign it means that we need to wait a bit for the paint to dry and then to repaint it again and that's not cool because we are not that rich on time and we will have to see what to do about it so here we have first set of rifles and next we are going to have another pair of rifles which will be placed in, inside the car as you remember and again I think we are having the same issues as what we saw on the last rifle I'm painting the wooden part at least a bit so that we have a wood shade, the brown shade. Also it will be tricky to apply the gun metal because gun metal should be applied only on the top section of the gun and I'm not sure if I should go really careful with this or I should just paint what I can and then proceed with installation. We will see. The fact that paint is somehow liquid does not add to the comfort of the painting. And I'm not sure why we have this problem, because on one rifle it works nicely and on, then on the next one it works really bad. So we have to find a way through it. You see, this rifle gets like really easily painted without any additional movement. While we go to the, this one and it will be completely different story. So let's try it again here, this second rifle. And already we have paint starting to disperse around the part and form small puddles. It's not that cool. 
and I think I will have to use the hair dryer because otherwise it will be a complete mess. And that's not that nice sign in my opinion. Uh, I wonder why these paints just can't work without any additional issues. What I'm trying is to do the horizontal strokes so that we have at least some chance for the success. It seems to be working. And I hope at least this way paint will stay in place and we would be free to apply the gun metal. <laughs> so let's put them aside to dry. Uh, these rifles. The ones which we painted first, they should be dry already. I'll just place them in front of the lamp so that they dry faster. And what else we have to do is to paint these two small guys. But I think that's not that important because fuel cans are just a matter of several minutes to do. Uh, what I'm more worried is weathering because tomorrow weathering will have to be finished and then we will do a final photo shoot. So today I apply decals and cover everything with clear um, wacker, as I said before, and then we do weathering and then we do the final photo session. So it will be quite funny marathon to finish the model in one day. But actually that's not one day, we have how many days? Uh, we spent 10 evenings together, right? So it is one hour each evening, so 10 hours in total. Which might sound impressive, but in reality it's less than what you give to, to the model while building it thoroughly, let's say, without any um, any discounts on the speed. You just try to build high quality model and then you are stuck with this model for half a year. That might fight and sound funny, but that's not that funny when you realize how much time you invest in one of your models and instead of enjoying the hobby, you're just torturing yourself, trying to get this part in a perfect shape. And I think that's not the right approach to the hobby, because if you don't enjoy it that much, if you're just trying to do over and over the same silly thing, that's not the right thing to pick. Okay, so what I'm going to use for, for the roof is a varnished wood here. Just give me a second. And maybe this dark grain which we use for the wood on the rifles. We will use it for um, belts on the roof. But for now we are going to paint the wooden parts on the roof. Okay. They might look a bit bright while fresh, but I'll apply some washings during weathering stage in order to make this shade look dull. And this will help us get more interesting appearance in comparison with just painted parts.
So roof looks more or less ready. I just need to paint another side and it will be good to be installed on the vehicle. That's pretty much cool when you see your vehicle first in form of chassis without wheels. Now it's car body with doors but without wheels. So final touches and we would be installing this roof on the car straight away. With decals it will be a bit tricky because uh, usually I use the decal softening solution but obviously decal softening solution will be quite harmful for uh, for what we have in acrylic paints so it will be let's say stripping the paint of the parts and that's why we are going to find a way around this because decals as I said will be applied without clear coat or maybe we'll use the, uh, let's say, aerial covering clear coat. So where we need to apply decal, we will spray a bit of clear coat. And then we would cover whole model in clear coat. So we would see about this. And by the way, here you can see a really good thing about this plate. Is that you don't have to use any... Um, any paint thinner in order to remove the paint from it you just scrape it a bit and you're good to go so now i'm drying this wooden paint a bit and we would install this part straight away where it should be Okay, it seems to be ready, so now let's fix it in place. Should be something like this. And from this side it should be something like this. Okay, so we have it. Blind. I just don't understand why from one side it sits perfectly and then from another side we have to press a bit. Well, we would press but I mean that's just a bit weird. Okay, so what we are going to use? We are going to use the CA glue because I think it will be more suitable for what we are going to do. and easier to fix part in place without any damage to the paint because now the repaints will be really crushable and dangerous so that's why we are going to use the super glue CA glue in order to have part just glued in place and staying in the spot by the way what I was saying about the paint uh, when I was using the airbrush now, uh, what I saw on the photos of this vehicle is that uh, original paint was not that, let's say, high quality. And basically, you can see even the brush strokes on some parts. So, I decided to copy it on one side of the vehicle. It will be visible on the photos, I hope. And if it won't be visible, then... <laughs> then it will be necessary to copy this effect in the future with even more brush strokes, we say. Okay. So part sits in place. And what I'm going to do is to apply the drop of CA glue in the rear section so that it does not move at all and stays 
fixed in place without danger of going somewhere else. Okay, so now part stays in place. CA glue is quite fast and we have it, we have the roof on the vehicle. Next, uh, we have what we have is a front screen windshield and also fuel cans. So, fuel cans, I will be doing them tomorrow and I'm going to apply decals in a moment. Wheels will be weathered separately. So basically now we have to use decals. Here you can see this decals sheet. And what we will have to do is to apply the number plates. And what else here we have. This sign of the duck on the tank. As you remember it's on the front wheel arch. I'm not sure still about the uh, dials for the dashboard. Maybe I'll apply some of them just to have more interesting appearance. And then I will cover whole vehicle with clear lacquer, as I said before, and we would weather it thoroughly. Wheels will be weathered separately, as I said before. Um, fuel cans will be painted also as a separate parts. And what I almost forgot is this rifles. So we are going to finish rifles together. Okay, so for rifles I was going to use the gunmetal wax paste from AK Interactive. It is good to be um, polished, but I am not going to polish this paste. I'm just going to use it straight away in order to have a nice finish on our guns and dangerous part about this paste is not to get dirty because then you get shiny like a disco guy as you can see here and okay so we are going to use the sharp brush thin brush and let's apply it let's apply this metal shade here it also has quite funny smell so if you are a fan of modeling glue smell you will appreciate this smell as well Okay, so we have this gun painted more or less. Just finish another side. And again, there is no need to be worried about the shades of those parts because they will become dull when we'll apply a bit of weathering. And by weathering, I mean filters and various magic things which we usually use to have parts less bright on the final model. So again I'm going to do the same painting operation here on the next rifle. Actually I really recommend this space to everybody who would like to have nice metal finish on their models. That's really nice thing to have in your tools. Really easy to use. And if used with care, you will get nice result. So, okay, we flip it over. We apply this here. Before for this 
uh, area for the gunmetal shades I used the Tamiya uh, metallic actually not metallic but the enamel but then they stopped selling those paints in Czech Republic so I had to pick up something different and that's where those pastes came handy so that's more or less rough to finish on those rifles I will do some touch ups for the wood but now we are going to do the to apply the gunmetal shade on another pair of rifles and by the way this Paste is also good for dry brushing. So if you love dry brushing method, this is a completely useful medium which will help you bring various details on your guns. But it is sometimes tricky to apply in certain situations. So of course, as all things, it has its own advantages and disadvantages. Okay. And here. Okay. It's always funny when you build such model, you're like, yeah, it's almost finished. And then you stuck with various pioneer tools and other stuff to do before you have your vehicle even ready to be peddled. And sometimes that's what makes models, let's say, leave and go for the next build. But don't be afraid of this. Just try to push yourself a bit more and you will have everything ready. So we have paste applied. That's all for gunmetal shade. I'm closing this nice small paste tube. Putting it back into its transparent box. And now for this we need this odorless thinner because otherwise it will be really difficult to remove this paint from the brush. Okay. I'm quite surprised how this thinner works, it's just completely cleans brush from the first stroke on the paper towel and that's really handy okay and now as I promised we have to do the touch up for the wood so we are going to use the wood grain once again I'm already rhyming this so wood grain once again and we apply it on the wooden part obviously but I just have one interesting idea. I'm going to apply it after we separate these parts of the sprue because anyway we will have to separate them and do some small touch-ups. So that's why it is better to combine these two actions together and have those parts ready to be installed straight away. So just give me a second. Okay, one is ready and also the second one is here, but I'm not going to hurry with it because here we have small trick on where to apply these parts. Okay, so I'm going to clean this one. I'm 
and I need sharp tweezers for this. And magic wall of air. Okay, rifle is ready to be touched up. So just give me a second. <laughs> My stream on the screen is somehow lagging behind, so I'm going to reload it. And we are going to paint this rifle this brown color. Okay, so this fine. And it's prepared to be installed into the necessary spot. <laughs> and now the question is, where is this spot? Because I'm not sure which rifle where should be applied. So just give me a second. Here we have part C30 and exactly this part. And we apply it into the rear section of the vehicle. Nice. So I'm going to use tweezers and with tweezers we are going to glue this part into the necessary spot which is here. Now we need also the CA glue and with CA glue we have some interesting stuff happening because it is really difficult to open this cap. So, okay, this, this, and this all together, we get the, yeah, we get the part on the floor. Anyway, Okay, so we apply it here. I'm not sure why on the right side, it can be from both sides, but I decided to have it on the right side of the vehicle. So now just a bit of playing with the gun in order to have it glued in the right spot and we will have it installed straight away into the necessary area. I'm going to help with hand as you can see. Okay, now it stays in place. And now we should press a bit. Because I'm not sure what is happening, why the part jumps out on me. Maybe it became self-aware. Maybe has a mind of its own, but still needed to be in the right spot. Okay, so it's glued. And just to be sure, I'm going to add really tiny drop of the fast setting glue, so that it won't eat the paint, but it will somehow hold this rifle in place. So here you can see it installed in the right spot. And now we are going to move to the next part. That's a part C31, which obviously should be glued in the front. So let's cut it off. And on the C sprue, we have only screen wiper left and also those two uh, wheel covers which will be replaced a bit later. Now it's not the time for wheel covers. We have to solve rifles and then we would be ready to paint this vehicle. Actually, not to paint, but to cover it with gloss 
and nice layer of lacquer. So again, I'm doing a bit of paint touch up here. Okay. Moisten the brush. Again, moisten the brush. And it should be fine. Okay, so as I said, this rifle goes in the front. And here we have a bit more tricky stuff to do because <coughs> we will have to apply this rifle right beside the steering wheel. And while assembly manual suggests to do it before installation of the steering wheel, we are doing otherwise because it's just way too easy to do it without steering wheel. And I'm still not sure how it should be aligned because um, because it's not understandable where it should look. It's interesting. Part C39 should be almost vertically extending on your model. And I think I just found the perfect position for this rifle. Okay, so we apply again small bit of the fast setting glue. I hope it won't eat the paint and it will fix part in place. And we have two rifles fixed in place already. Now we can move to the next ones. I'm just checking if we can move rifle a bit to the left. So that it won't be that obvious. We touch on the steering wheel. So we have it in the place. Now we repeat the same operation with other two rifles. So first I would like to install the rear one, that's a C30. Okay. Somehow C30 cut off really nice. I don't see any possible issues here. Maybe just a bit of cleanup will help. Otherwise, it's not that problematic. So just give me a second. Okay, and now we moisten the brush once again so that it will be cleaner and nicer. And I need new small brush, obviously. I don't like how it looks. So if you have spare brushes, send me. <laughs> but jokes aside, I should visit the Prague model shop in order to get nice brushes for next projects. Because what I plan to do is to add more interior work into the projects so that it will be more interesting for us and obviously such stuff will require usage of the pointed brushes and yeah we apply more paint on the vehicle but 
jokes aside, we apply this again for setting glue here. It should set everything in the place and it will be good to go. And now we just add the frontal rifle in the right spot. And then we can continue with decals. Maybe we can continue with decals together because it will be funny to see how they go in the place without decals set in solution and without clear code applied beforehand. Even though everybody recommends it and just don't want to use it. And I'm going to break this rifle. I guess the one which is placed in front, the one which is the most visible one, I'm just damaging it more and more. Okay. Again, we have this problem that um, attachment point was placed on the most visible spot here which will be visible when we install it onto the vehicle, inside the vehicle. So I'm not really sure what designers were thinking about when they were doing such stuff, because this attachment point could be placed here, which is like barely visible on the bottom. It could be placed here on this part, which is attached into the vehicle. It's like a lot of options and they use the worst one possible for such decision. And that actually adds more work to do because otherwise you will end up with really ugly vehicle and you have to somehow jump around trying to clean this and that while designers just could apply a bit of thinking and have everything fixed with different areas on the sprue. Okay, so another rifle fall down. No panic. We just pick it up without breaking anything and throw it away. <laughs> anyway, we do it once again. I'm going to help his finger. So here we are. We have rifle fixed in place. And now a bit of was setting glue so that everything stays in place. Okay. It looks good, in my opinion. And now, as promised, I'll run to get a bowl of hot, I mean, warm water so that we can apply necessary decals. I will also need scissors, but I think I have them here in my magic knife. Uh, so, again, scissors. Here we have them. So now I just need to get the bowl of water. So. Just give me a moment. And I'm back with this huge bowl of water to drink. But first let me clean the brush 
so that it won't stay dirty overnight and then I will have even more damaged brush as a result. Okay, so it looks more or less fine. Go into the shelf. So now water is cold. I will just refill the water because water is cold. It's not warm. I did not wait it to be warm, and that's why we have cold water. Okay, now it's suitable temperature and we are going to have the marking option on the application menu. So here you can see it. I hope that the third version which of the car from Panzer Group uh, first placed in Ukraine in July 1941 so we are going to apply all the symbols and we would be good to go and we have the cow sheet here we are going to start with the smallest ones those are tiny letters this is a panzer group Kleist, so that's why we have K letter both in the front and in the rear. Now just give me a second to cut it off. And we will apply the first symbol on the front. I saw some modelers actually using in order to have hot water, they're using the special warming up cup which is cool to have it's connected by a usb so that's why you constantly have the hot water without any problem and without necessary necessity to refill it again and again um, it costs reasonable amount as far as i remember so if you hate such stuff like cold water in a few seconds that's definitely thing to try I haven't seen nice let's say option for this so that's why I'm still using old method for this so here we have the first decal applied that's a K letter as you remember and I'm going to Moisten it a bit with my finger. Okay, so we have it in place. And it's surprisingly easy to apply it in the place. So next we have another K letter. This one goes into the rear area of the vehicle. Again, we cut off any excessive paper, decals paper, because we might end up with shiny film around the symbols and we definitely do not want such effect on our car and I think maybe also why those decals actually this decal, because it's just one symbol yet uh, was easy to apply is due to the warm water we use so definitely do not forget this quite simple and easy trick use the warm water always when you would 
want to apply decals on your model. So we are going to remove this one. And actually I might be using the decal softening solution because here, for example, we have K letter placed right in, in the most tricky area. And not only it doesn't want to stay in place, but it also No, actually it adheres properly to the surface. That's really surprising. Like, I'm quite amazed. So just give me a second to soften it a bit. The only thing I forgot to take with me is the paper towel. Actually, not the paper towel, but the the cotton bud. So that's why I'm using the paper towel now, because I don't have time to run for the paper for the cotton bud. And why cotton bud is better because you can actually press it thoroughly. But what I do have is the small sponge, which might be handy as well. But I have a dusty, so it's a bit dangerous. And yes, I'm not going to use it because it's full of dust, and all this dust will end up on the vehicle in no time. And we have first part broken off. That's a small one which is placed, a uh, small side mirror which is placed in the frontal area. I'll just take it off and I'll place it a bit later in the necessary area. So next we have the duck on the tank. And duck on the tank will be applied a bit later. Now we need to apply the number plate, which is 582 as far as I can see. So I'm going to cut off the number plates. And actually this way we go also to the duck decal. Okay, so first of all, I would like to apply the rear plate and then we go on with other symbols. Obviously, um, with the cows softening solutions, it should be way easier to apply. But we are doing this build in a bit different, let's say, setup. So that's why we don't have the luxury of using the decal softening solution for this build. I hope the next build won't be that pressed in time. So we would be able to use softeners for better appearance. Okay, so here I'm a bit surprised. There's a number plate because actually it looks like that number plate is slightly bigger. 
I'm not sure. I mean, the part is smaller than decal, so I'm not sure what to do with this. Because we can leave the part, I mean, decal like this. It will be stiffened with a clear coat, and then it will look like the metal plate, the metal plate for the license plate. But that's really strange that we have the plastic part smaller than decal, the actual decal. And while we are in the rear section, I'm also going to apply the duck on the tank. It would be interesting to assemble tank out of this group. I guess it would be some Panzer IV. Who knows, maybe it will be the next project. Now I'm just interested on how this duck will be coming out of the vacuum film, but it is quite easy to see. And um, we are going to moisten it a bit and apply it on the vehicle. You can even press a bit with tweezers when applying decals so that they repeat the surface of the plastic parts and maybe it will save you the application from application of the decal softener on your model. Now we turn the model over and we apply another duck. So here it is. This one will be easier to apply because here we have the point surface. So we just place it in the necessary area and we will be good to go. I had some water left on my tweezers, which is not that good, so that's why I had to click a bit several times. And now I just need to see how the duck was applied, the right alignment. So it was applied like this. So here, you little duck. Okay, it works okay. Now we just dampen a bit this the paper towel so that it dries completely. So here you can see it on the frontal area, but that's not all because we are going to use the number plate, number plate for the frontal area, and just give me a to cut it off. Okay. Again, the same process of the application. And again, I can see that this number plate will be smaller than the actual plastic part. Again, I don't understand why. So, we are going to deal with it somehow <coughs> sorry i'm still a bit ill but that's not that serious problem i think in comparison with our model build 
Okay, so here we are. Let me just move this scissors a bit away and the Y decal in the place like this. Now I'm going to use a bit of water drop because it will help decal actually soften and adhere to the plastic. That's really important because otherwise you end up with decal constantly going off from the plastic part. Now we are going to remove the water by just touching the decal with paper towel. Be careful because decal still moves. It has some water and that's why it goes up and down. So here it is. Decal is in place. And now we are going to do the dials. With dials it will be a bit more funny thing because we have the dials printed all together but I'm going to cut them into separate circles and apply them one by one. So here we have the first one. An even more funny thing will be that these decals can be applied only with tweezers. So no finger help, nothing will be used during this stage, let's say. Okay, so we dampen this decal a bit, remove it from the backing film okay and now the most interesting part is why because we have to glue this decal in place somehow it would be easier to do with the fingertip, but fingertip won't fit here, so that's we are going to use the toothpick and lose the decal in the middle of the car. That's really perfect. End up for the decal, but that's not all, because we are going to pick it up. and do another try, but this time we moisten the cow a bit and I will also use the light, so sorry for covering the area okay, so the cow is in place now we just push it a bit. And align it to look better. Of course you could do everything, uh, I mean not everything, but you could do this operation beforehand because manufacturer actually suggests to apply decals before dashboard installation. But I decided to not to. So that's why I'm doing it right now. And I'm going to cut off another big dial and I think it will be more than enough because other dials will be barely visible and that's not necessary to waste your time with them, in my opinion. Of course it will be up to you if you would like to have them uh, all replicated on your model, just go for it. 
but I'm going to copy this RPM meter and it will be good to go. Hi, Jan. Nice to see you on the stream. And another decal. Before we finish the decals application process. Sometimes decals application is really interesting to do because you just apply one by one and you see how model changes. But sometimes it becomes so dull and boring that you're like, when it will be over. Fortunately, this is not the case, but I just was the decal and I will have to pick it up somehow. So here it is. Okay, and we do it again. One more try. What I'm doing now is moistening the decal a bit, just not to lose it, but to have it wet and ready to be applied on the model. So now I'm not sure where is it. It is here. Okay. Okay, now just go into the right spot. So as you can see, it's a bit of surgical work here. And we end up with decal on the... Not where we intended to be. <laughs> so we are going to apply a bit of water to the decal and then go straight away to the dashboard okay so now it is in place and final tune of alignment and it is there Whew. so it is here <laughs> question huh? Uh, I think it all depends on what you are doing. And also, you know, some people doing realism in some unnecessary things where it is not like worth it. And we discussed this case before. Some modelers are really angry about the cases when you know that it is there, but nobody sees it, you know. So it's definitely a matter of the personal approach, you know. And again, who said that the models should be completely realistic, you know. At first it was just a hobby for enjoying the whole process. But then we started going after rivets, rivets and doing more and more crazy stuff. I mean, just look at the kits which were released before. Nobody even complained that there were uh, rivets going somewhere else than in the right direction. And now everybody is suddenly a specialist knowing how the right angle of the BF109 look like. BF109 cooling to be precise. And why this or that manufacturer is wrong. You know, I mean, actually this is a double-edged sword because manufacturers could take this opportunity as well. They could use, or let's say, leverage models their own benefit because it is really cool to create 
models in cooperation with Madeiros, and I think we would see soon such projects because that's the way to go in my opinion and there is no point in showing that we are smart and you are not when you have such a huge let's say feedback from Madeiros themselves for free and these Madeiros are really eager to help you to um, get even more precise models but again uh, precision or realism sometimes is limited by the technology so what should be copied on the model can't be copied due to various reasons be it manufacturing reason be it um, reason that it can be copied in the project on the project stage so that's why it's not that easy I would say and not that, uh, how to say it, not that clearly defined as a two opposites. So I would say just as long, that's what I was saying in the beginning of this video, as long as you enjoy this hobby, it is fine. When you stop to enjoy this hobby and you are just pursuing some ideal, that's not fine. And the scale modeling stops to be hobby, it starts to be obsession. And obsession is not what we want to have, you know. So we have model covered with... By the way, I hope that I answered your question, Jan. So we have model covered with necessary paint shades. The only thing which I just realized, I have to paint the shovel. So... But I will do it later because, I mean, with the shawl it's not that serious problem. We have the roof installed, we have rifles in place, we also have dials on the dashboard even. Uh, we also have the decals on the car body. So basically all the main steps are finished. Uh, what we have to do is to apply the clear coat on whole vehicle then to apply weathering on this vehicle and we will be good to go. So that's all for this video review. Just let me remind you again that you can help us by pressing the donate button on our website. It's really necessary for us because oh, it would be cool to have improved video uh, and also live session with various features which will be interesting for you. So if you would like to help us press the donate button, choose the amount you would like to gift us and we will use this money for new photo and video equipment. And of course, stay tuned, join us tomorrow because tomorrow this vehicle should be done and I will show it in a final, uh, let's say, condition. So thank you for joining today. Thank you for asking questions really cool questions. I'm quite happy to answer them and I will see you tomorrow as usual. Just press the like button before you leave. Bye.